Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we have a new stack from Mamba and Mamba is made by Diatone. This is the F722 Mini. It's a 20 by 20 stack that is 6S capable. It comes with the flight controller, the ESC, this board and some other things as well, which we're going to take a look at in a bit. Now, this board here is rocking an F7 microcontroller unit, the smaller one, obviously, because it's a really small board. We also have an MPU 6000 gyro, which is not the sensitive gyro. So, and it really doesn't matter nowadays that much because anyways, Betaflight has stopped supporting the 32 kilohertz gyros. So you're still gonna be totally fine with this setup. Now, as you can tell, it is soft mounted and <laughs> they're using a bunch of little uh, rubber O-rings here. Let's do a quick look over the flight controller before we take a closer look at the ESC and see how well everything is on that ESC. So let's go over the flight controller here. Now, as you can tell, we have the air here, which means it should be placed near quadcopter like this with the front of the quadcopter pointing that way. Now, if you needed it in a different way, then you should probably make sure you know what you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, just install it like this and everything will work out great for you. Now, as you can tell, they've used connectors here to connect the ESC, which does save a lot of time. And a lot of people don't like the pins and Diatone has been listening. So they've only just been doing them with the wires here. So it makes your life a little bit easier. And if you also wanted them broken out into pads, we have that right here. And this is the reason why they gave us this little extra PCB with just about everything on there. Now on the back, it also has some more information that tells you where everything is going. We have UART 4 is for ESC telemetry by default. UART 1 is SBUS or IBUS. So keep that in mind. It doesn't matter. This is an F7. Now looking over the board, we see we have the MPU 6000 gyro up top. We have a little OSD, the two tantalum capacitors to keep the overall OSD clean and reduce high frequency noise and something called the OSD flickers. If you ever had that, that was a long time ago. I don't even think it happens that much anymore, but yeah, that's really great. They're using proper components in order to filter out for the OSD here. Now here we have the F7 microcontroller unit. We also have this chip right here, which is the 16 megabyte memory for a black box since obviously we don't have room to incorporate an SD card expansion. And it is using a switching regular for the 5 volt and as well as a TVS diode which is really nice because this kind of suppresses the voltage spikes it just cuts off that voltage spike and it just soaks it into the diode so it's a huge plus and huge addition and it's a very well thought out board it's not a half-assed one just to make and throw it into the market which is something I really like and if ever, for some reason if you ever had an issue with your 3.3 volt regulator this is the guy right here so you can debug him if he's getting hot then you know this is where the problem is. So let's go over the layout here. I might make mistakes in the numberings because it's really, really, really far away from me and it's really small writing and I think I do need glasses now. So here we have the buzzer. If you wanted to add a buzzer, make sure you add it here because the buzzer negative is what enables the buzzer. So if you ever put it on like a five volt and a ground, it'll just always be on depending on the type of buzzer, if it's active or passive. But anyways, put your buzzer right here. Here we have just five volt LED and ground. So if you wanted your LED, that's where you'd put them. It's really nice that it's broken out and you don't have to share the power rails with anything. So if you wanted to put LEDs, you can do that there. Here we have a VCC and ground, which is a huge addition. And why is that? Well, now if you wanted to bring in a large VTX, something that takes more than five volts, because this is meant for five inch quadcopters, which take big VTXs that take a lot of power. So it's really nice that they broke that out for you right there. I really do like that. And if you wanted to add smart audio it's really nice that they've also added a UART 6 here so what you can do is you can take the smart audio from your VTX and put it on the TX6 and I think that is TX6 from this far so UART 6 would be the smart audio for you in beta flight ports tab so that's where I would connect it personally here we have another UART broken out it's UART 5 with a power rail as well we have ground in a 5 volt which would be these ones in this area right here so over the overall layout looks really really nice a dedicated RSSI pad if you needed anything for you know if you had a receiver that just has a dedicated RSSI you can go ahead and take full advantage of that pad S bus, S bus will work on I bus and S bus because this is an F7 flight controller, so it doesn't really matter, but it will be on UART 1 and it should be enabled by default. PPM, if anyone's still using PPM, there you go. And we also have a five volt in ground. Now, someone mentioned in my previous video with the bigger brother of this that it doesn't have a 3.3 volt regulator on the bigger one. And I don't think this one does either actually. So if you're using spectrum, you're gonna have to bring in your own voltage regulator to step down the voltage to 3.3 volts. All right, so here, Actually, here we have a little, not an issue, but it could be. It's not really an issue, but yeah, I didn't see this before. So this is where your VTX would go. So this is the yellow wire for your VTX. 
uh, this would be smart audio so it would be on tx3 ground 5 volt now th this is taking in mind that you're going to be using a vtx that outputs 5 volt, that takes in 5 volts however most vtx's don't take 5 volts and what you'd want to do then what i would personally recommend uh forget this side down here I would put the VTX signal, I would put the smart audio, I would put the ground here, and then I'd go all the way to VCC to give the power to my VTX. That's if my VTX takes more than five volts. So keep that in mind. Camera, we have the yellow wire for the camera, ground, five volt, really nice, really basic, really simple. Here we have another UART4 up here, and then we have a dedicated current pad uh, that is going to be in here. And again, these are all broken out for you, so if you don't want to use a connector, you can go ahead and solder direct to the these right here but be careful if you do decide to solder here you don't want the solder to drop through and make a really big clunk and then you know because this side could be ground here and then these are both vcc and ground so if these short touch each other or one of them touches with this then you could have a really bad short circuit so keep that in mind if you are going to be soldering a vcc and ground uh this will power up the board basically because this does take vcc input so yeah just be careful with that and we also have our esc signals one two three four and we have the telemetry telemetry is not going to do much telemetry all it'll do is give you the uh, temperature and the rpm uh, sensor however it will not give you the current because the current is being routed through a dedicated pad and there's just one little baby current uh sensor right here all right so under close inspection of the mosfets here they're using a p channel mosfet and an n channel mosfet for each phase and that's not bad that's good but two n channel fets would is a lot more efficient and produces less heat thus you know the lower the heat the better it is for any hardware component or hardware device so keep that in mind it's not a deal breaker but it's just uh, i don't know why they went this route i hope you're listening diatone just stick to two end channels those perform always a little bit better so this is a bill heli 32 esc and the filtration looks actually quite minimal for my liking to be honest but you're gonna have to put a capacitor with this guy, that's for sure. And I think they do provide you with a capacitor on this guy. So the bottom looks like it's conformal coated, but the top doesn't. Yeah, so the bottom is conformal coated. It's a really nice addition that they've done that. The top is not. So uh, that's really nice when wet grass comes in. I've actually burnt a couple of ESCs from wet grass, so uh, this will help somewhat, but I really wish they would have done both sides, but maybe I'm asking for too much here. And this is a 30 amp 6S ESC. And also a really nice addition here on the side is that if you didn't want to use a connector, you can go ahead and just solder them directly to it. It's really nice that they've done that. They didn't have to, but you will have to definitely, I recommend a capacitor even on a 4s setup let's take a look at the box here and see what they provided us with so they give us a bunch of o-rings here they also gave us long screws so if you wanted to use this instead you can which is really nice they also gave us little wire uh, i would have i would have liked to see a bigger gauge than that however there is no xt30 hmm that's interesting so i didn't get an xt30 i don't know if it comes with an xt30 or an xt60 sorry uh, they do give you an extra cable if you needed that. And I think this is a Panasonic. I'm not sure. But they give you a 470 microfarad, 35 volt uh, capacitor, which I highly recommend you add. Please add this. If I were to do a 6S ESC noise testing, I would definitely add this because, because my 6S ESC testing setup will actually possibly burn the ESC because it's not human and it just does a really nasty stress test. So that is why I would not run this without a capacitor on the test, on a 6S test to be exact. Neither probably on a 4S test. I really don't like the filtration. I, you know, I wish there was a little bit, slightly more filtration going on for it. I think the older version of the 20 by 20 did have uh, better filtration for the uh, for that one, but you know, time will tell. So I will be testing this alongside its larger brother on a 6S ESC uh, noise test and possibly a stress test, but the stress testing is a little bit difficult. I still can't get an ESC to burn, <laughs> which is pretty interesting. So I might have to come up with some really nasty way to burn those ESCs. Uh, but till then, this is the Mamba F722 Mini. Really nice stack. Wish it was a little bit cheaper, but overall they didn't go cheap on any of the components or the way they thought about executing the whole thing. So it's a really nice board. Hopefully it does perform well and we'll get to see that very soon. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, guys. Please check the links down below. I'll have everything linked down below. Those greatly support the channel and also do have a Patreon for you can check that out as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.